all around the playing at pace. You know, when we talk about pace, obviously typically people think about you know, fast breaks in transition, that's definitely a part of it, but also playing at pace in the half court as well and making quick decisions um, is definitely a part of it, a part of all that. Um, and as well, it talks to the athletes about being lag free. So when they're playing, whether it's in transition or in the half court, not hesitating, not having any lag to that game. Like you make a decision and you stick to that decision. So um, that's what I'll be presenting on. So 45 minutes on pace and concepts. Like Mark said, this clinic is for you, so it's for coaches. So at times it won't be like a practice session where we get the athletes and they won't be getting many reps of the things. It'll be, I'll kind of give you a quick demo, a few reps, just so you get a bit of a taste of it, and then we'll kind of move on to something different, just so I can show you as much as I possibly can in 45 minutes. Um, I can tell you now, some of what we're going to do, it's not going to be pretty. We get a little bit ugly, some of the drills, some of the transition stuff, there will be a lot of turnovers. And a part of that is you're going to ask the athletes to play, try and play at a pace that they're not used to, a little bit far, a lot faster than what they used to, whether that's in the half court, in transition. Um, I know Webby can vouch for it. If you were at our first under 20 women's camp, and our first, like first camp, there was so many turnovers. Like crazy, the amount of turnovers we had. But by the time we go away to nationals, we had the least turnovers of all teams there. So, um, although some, like Sean, some did this, um, Zoe and Taya have done little bits and pieces of as well. For everyone else, it's be pretty new concepts about how we want to play in transition and in the half court. So, again, it, it's part of coaching is you just got to get used to that. Sometimes it's going to be messy and it's not always going to be clean and how you want it to be. Uh, one thing I want to make really clear, and I say this at most clinics, so it's not necessarily the drills that you see that make them better, it's the teaching points. So I'm going to try to do a good job of when we're going throughout it, like really making it clear what the teaching points are, what the coaching points are, that's what makes your team successful or not. It's not a particular type of play you run, it's not a drill you do at practice that makes them great players, it's the teaching point. We're predicated on three things, and I'll kind of break it, you'll see how we kind of break it down a little bit and build it up. So the first one is the ability to make a play one-on-one, -on -one. so that's the first thing we need to cover. Second one is receiver spots, which is not a new crazy concept, we'll talk about drift, diag, drag, all that, but with that, the spacing playing really wide might be a little bit different to what you might have seen before. Um, and then again, making quick decisions. So we say the athletes, like on the catch, you have to make a decision within a two count. So by the time you've caught the ball, it's one and two, and by the time you get to two, you're doing something, whether it's shooting it, passing it, driving it. Right, so again, if you have questions throughout, they can say to ask. Um, yeah, and we'll get into it. I'm just gonna check the ball, and then it's just live one on one. Pretty easy, yeah. Offense, so once you play out of, if you get two moves, you can play out of on the catch. So I'll give you Mason for a second. From the catch, the first move is like you can just go and just and drop and go. So drop and go, or you can glide. So from the check, I can drive sideways and then drop and go. Does that make sense? So you want to see a really clear, like change of speed. This side will go, then that side will go. Alright, drop and go, or glide. They two moves to play out. Here we go. Oh. So this is more so in the half court. What I'll show you next would be more so in transition and making plays at speed. So when you catch it, like you can just kind of stand there, stand there, like you can glide a couple of times, and then you make the move. So don't feel like you have to catch it and go straight away. Okay, here we go. Thank you. 
again, just two moves. I'm going to try to show you about five different moves, so to speak. You wouldn't um, try and get the athletes to be great at all five of these. <coughs> okay, so um, they were just two. We very normally you would break it down, you know, one on O, and I just want to give you a taste of what it might look like. With your teams, maybe you pick two or three of these moves that you want to focus on and try and get them to master. Right, so the next part of it is in transition. So you're going to throw it, and you're chasing your pass play defense. Sean, so you're going to step into your pass and just go back to it. So when the pass comes to you, you're stepping into it, and then you're attacking downhill at speed. Right, two moves you might have to experiment with here. So I'm catching it on a move. First one is an in and out dribble. Okay, on the side. So why would you want to move your on board? That's the first move. The second one is jab and go. So what a jab and go is, is you're attacking it, Cross over, jab, and then go. So you cross over, then do a jab. As opposed to a traditional crossover where you might say, you plant and cross the same time. The crossover, jab, and jab. Make sense? Awesome. Yeah. A pace. Running them off, so you're running out of there, you're closing out, you're 
running off the line, not giving up a three on that first pass from me. Okay? So more than likely it will happen. So you're looking for your shot, they take away, you're going to drive hard. Okay, the tactical ones. Now we're moving to our receiver spots. So we're moving down, so we've got drift, dive, and drain. From here, attack the kill box, so you kick it out. So, some teaching points for this. My, like, my ones, you know, pick three or four. One of them would definitely be when you pass it, you turn and sprint and get out of the keyway. Now, if you watch any high level basketball, say, as an example, pick and roll play, like the best guards, they get in, they throw it out, and then they just sprint and create space. Or as you see a lot of the time, particularly at the junior level, athletes get into the keyway, they throw and they just stay in. In there. Okay, so you throw it out and turn the sprint. Now, if there's two players on the same side, then first one will pause your shot. You can't drive it back in there if there's two on the same side. So it's shot, throw one more, and now you can do anything. You can go back, so the first one you will pause your shot. So shot, let's say you drive it, attack the kill box, and then the action just repeat itself and drag behind. Now, let's say we throw it to the drag. Again, you pass, turn the sprint. You can do anything here, Sean. You can shoot it, drive it, but there's only one person on the same side. All right, we got it? The scoring for this. So again, two points if they get a clean shot. You get three points if you make it three. You get three points if you get a white. Anything else is one point. All right? I'll give you this. So your teaching points for this, attack the kill box. When you're driving, like it's not pull up the free throw line, you're attacking the kill box. Really quick decision. Okay, so off a two counter. So one or two can go and do something. Alright? Um, like I said, turn and sprint. And as well, so this just as an example, let's say drives here, get the drift and dive. Let's say this is happening, the always steps up and help. So now when we get to this two on one situation, so yep, we're drift and dive. When this pass gets thrown out, what we actually want this player to do is try and spread the distance that that defense has to cover. So it's almost like, just go back so Macy's got it. So it's as she's starting to drive, and you can see Riley stepped up and is starting to just spread out a little bit that way. So that, like, pass gets thrown. Yep. You have to make this, like, you have to choose who you're going to defend, you can't defend to. Right? So there are four things. Attack toolbox, turn and sprint, quick decisions to spread out the distance. Right? Okay, don't get inside. Okay. <laughs> Good, not me. I'll um, stay up here to score. Stay up. Three nil. Ready? Up, up, up. All right. Back to the ball. Play on, play on, play on. Hey, hey, hey. 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 So, I don't mind that it's not really deep penetration they throw to you. I'm okay if you drop because you just don't like that. Oh, you do whatever. Like, you just play without lag and talk about the lag. Play the inside.
that was one. Let's wait to that. Basically, that was just a little bit of, oh, like a bit of lag. Whatever you do, even if it's wrong in the moment, like you just do it. And we can figure it out from there. So definitely that. Um, I'd say they weren't looking for that shot enough on the kick out. A lot of times they're just looking to catch it and drive. Right, that particular drill, I'm like scoring again, where I had one foot flew out and shot, just got to get on the ring. Basically, just don't get shot blocked and you get two points for that. So I felt like they could have walked with your shot a little bit more. Right. But otherwise, I think that it gives you a feel for the spacing and uh, trying to spread the defense out. And then, like I said, got to be able to take your fight on one on one, make the fight. So I'm sure you've seen this drill before. Again, it's not the drill that, that is super creative or innovative. Right, so I'll pass to someone, go to the choir, go run up the baseline. What we have changed here, so instead of having say, four players across the baseline, we're giving the offense an even clearer advantage by giving them a player who's already ahead of the ball. Okay? Uh, Teaching points for this. So what we want to see. Uh, for you, so you've got a choice if you're up here. You don't know what your game is, not what your strengths are. If you feel like you can rim run, and that's going to start coming out of court. If you feel like you can rim run, right, and you can create, maybe have a mismatch, maybe have the size, right, if you feel like you can do a good job of creating an angle, and you're allowed to rim run and try and see if you're up, you might start sealing them up now. You're allowed to do that. Okay? Otherwise, if it's not your game, you should probably say it's for you. Back, 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 back. <coughs> you don't feel like you can create a mismatch there. As soon as the ball's thrown, your job is to sprint to the side. So, as an example, you can sprint to the side. Okay? Now, teaching points. So, you can do it on. Defense, figure it out. You can how you're going to do that. Offense, a couple things. I want you to be sprinting like you say, bulk sprint. Okay, it's not a slow jog, it is like as soon as we get the ball, as fast as you have ever ran the corner of your life to get to the sideline, or the exception being that way there. So you're sprinting as hard as you can, and I want you to run deep to the corners. Okay, so let's say you hit that side, you'll be running deep to the corner, so you'll be running deep down that corner. That's the first teaching point, it's just sprint, get down the corner. Now, play over the wall, I want your head to be on the rim. Okay, so if oh, you go right now, your head is on the rim. So you're not showing the defense what you're doing. Right, so as an example, as I'm here, my head's in the rim, okay, you might throw a PA pass. As opposed to if you have a ball here, you're scary, it becomes obvious, you might do that, you might deny that, right? But if my head's in the rim, you're going to have to play me straight up. Okay? All you can do is, like I said, you keep your head, otherwise, head's in the rim, feel free, so if you just want to attack more. That's two or one, so it's my seat across. You do that. Or if you want to, let's say, let's say maybe I was going back to the play in three. You can just have your head on the ribs. If you want, you can just take it right hard off the bounce. You drag wide, and it's just the same concept you come with here. Right, so that's the part of having your head on the ribs. You can do anything, but you're not showing the defense what you're doing. Another thing you can do is say you're in the corner. Right, yeah, let's say Marley's trying to go back to the play, so you've got this, head on the rim. Right, you could have thrown a kick ahead, heads in the rim, you're saying deep in the water. Okay, you just want to drive hard and they help you get three. You can start to drive here and if you feel like Mason's had a good job of defending it or it's just not an angle, you can quickly, if you explore the zoom, you can quickly get to here and you'll pull up behind, it's like a quick to you, and you're going to drive hard up here. You'll pull out the zoom. Again, you wouldn't be staring at the person in the corner trying to do that, you're trying to attack the rim first.
slip to the side. I'm like, okay, well, I don't want you to stand out really wide. Get out really, really wide. And this is something we, we did for 2011. We didn't have any size, so we literally would just spread spread the defense out. And our spacing would be, sorry, Josh added it out. It would be four, it would be five out spacing. We would typically have our feet on a trailer behind the plate, but they wouldn't run into the keyway and create congestion. Right? So if you start to drive it there, you wouldn't kind of cut into the space, you would just pull behind. And then playing really wide. So let's say you're there, which should be. What happens when you play this side as opposed to playing maybe here, playing at the top, it makes it really hard to zone. Okay? Because she's in this really awkward spot where okay, I want to try to cut the nail, which is what we're told, and then throw it down as a wide open shot. Okay? Or then you're like uh, as a shooter and you're trying to get that to my fire and it creates this space for this player to be able to attack. Does that make sense? So when we go on the transition, I want to try to get to that space. We got it? Alright, reset it. Now what we're going to do, so we'll go two ways. So we go up and then back. Got that? Let's do this. If there's a score, right? If there's a score, the closest person to it. So that's an example. What we're going to do. The closest to it, I'm going to sprint. I'm just going to get one foot out of bounds and try and throw it and we're going. Make sense? Alright, so the closest to grab and just go as fast as we can. Yeah, okay. shooting threes um, and getting to the rim before we got to the rim a fair bit. So a little bit of it was dependent on the players and their IQ and 
just not out at a really smart good player, so he had a pretty good feel for the moment to go and the moment to shoot it. Um, I thought, again, I want the players to, like, first thing has been just everyone's on the side of being aggressive, like looking for kick out, looking for your shot, right? Now, I know what your strengths are. If that's not your game, then you might move it off, you might drive it hard back in there. Um, we did end up, that last shot that Sean took, I didn't mind it. It wasn't traditional two feet in the paint, kick out three in transition, right? But I thought we kind of started to get inside the three point line, defense helped, like wide open shot. I'm one of our better shooters, I'm going to take that. So, good point, good question. I don't know if that answers it very well. So, I'll quickly just show you on zero what it would look like with five players, and then I'll um, we'll play just four and four, play out of it a little bit. So, this is me, five players. Five, yeah, alright. Um, in basketball, yeah, so let's do this. So, um, dodge the ball. Imagine the exact same thing in transition. Now, we're going to have our five to be you, Marley. Let's just say you're behind the play right now. Alright, so same thing in transition. You're sprinting wide in sidelines, running deep to the corners. Let's just go there. Let's go with the basketball. Go down the corner, you're going to be right. Okay. So all that's like same spacing we had before, but we're just running really wide, really deep into the corners. Play off the ball, so your options are what we covered before. So then you say, maybe you get ahead of the ball and lift up, and head to the ring, and I see you open, and keep your head now, you're going to do that, then you're going to X start. Right? So X start, you're just going to cut from the front of the ball through the corner, and now you can do on the play, and you can turn that into a bit of a like, rub screen, so you can play on the front there, and you can always stop on the spot. Alright, so let's say you kick your head. Alright, next cut to the corner. Now, she, once she cuts off, if you feel like you're a defender, and it's a really awkward thing when you're on the ball, and a player cuts behind you, it's weird. It doesn't actually happen much in basketball. So you could at times be a bit just confused. So if you feel that there's that moment, then you could just drive it hard. Alright, now if you're trailing behind and you just got to feel the situation, if you um, see that there's like maybe a lane, you want to take and you'll just kind of pull to the top in space. If you don't feel like there's a lane, then you're just going to run into it and you're going to set a drag screen. Alright, so you're going to set a drag. Okay, now from here, so just point up drag, and again, that spacing is really wide. Okay, so we don't want to have a play up here at the top, we can see, so it creates space to be able to drive through the free throw line. Now, drive in, you're a roll up, you're on a screen point of line. Options here, so as you come off, you can take a shot. You might be able to keep the roll up. If these two players really sunk in, we've had the best way to kick it out and look for our shot. Okay? Otherwise, we want to look to throw it back. Okay? If you throw it back, guys, let's say you get really deep and throw it back, that's fine. You just kind of keep playing and everyone will just start to shuffle around a little bit. Otherwise, let's say maybe you get to the end and you throw it back and you just pop back to there. Look for your shot first, okay? Otherwise, throwing it into the post. And then we would get into our post action. Now, our post action, I won't touch on it too much. Our offense, our whole offense was predicated on one position. The only position you need to know is the five. The rest were all interchangeable. Okay, so our post action had to be a little bit different, a little bit unique because of that. We would just go play splits. So we would have, um, we had the person who passes in would just get to the scene. Set a screen there, you can come and sink by up and cut hard there. And if you did that, you would just pull to that spot, like green line. Okay, so if two players went there, get away from three. If there's confusion, you might get away up. Or just go back. So same deal, same deal. Screen there. Okay, so, um, you can use it and then you put it inside the car. That would just be our post action. Now we're not going to play out of that much. It's always coming down, you've got a head on the rim, and at any stage, you can just make the play and drive past the wire, play on the rim, you would drag behind. Right? You do that. Or, you're deep in the corner, and it's where that zoom, which we covered before, comes into play. So, head to the rim, head to the rim, try and talk, try and talk, really quick dribble and pitch. You've done that. And then, same deal for you, Marvin. There's a clear way into your space. Most of the time, though, they come off and you'll just be like trailing behind, spinning into a drag screen. Playing off that roll, pull behind, like, run through that. We were 
really go, anyone who went in there, to really closest to the wall, you would grab it out of the net, really quick and bound and go. Um, and I think that, that paid pretty good dividends for us. Most games, we would, what do we have? It's weird, we don't have much of basketball. We would have a play where the other team would score, we would get the ball in, and would we just be able to throw it straight down the court and get a wire? That happened at least once in most of the games we played at Nationals. Right, if you watch this play at the old V tournament, it happened a lot. We would just get it in. The throw. And our philosophy was we knew we'd give up points, so it was how quickly could we hit back. So it's, it's not like they score and we get a little bit, it's like they score and we get it and we're like gone and we're hitting back at you straight away. Right? So now let's say we go close to sit down and Marl, you get ahead of the ball. Right? So you're ahead of the ball, you're going to go set a punch screen. Go around, set a punch screen. Okay, same thing, you come off this, and then I just drive up hard, try to make a play. You're a punch and pop, it's a very simple play. If there's nothing on there, you can go and zoom, that would be fine. Let's say you get to the end zone, you drive back to there. Right? Then you would play this side. Now you could just run some flow stuff. Um, what we need is you ran put a double. And this way we would really just go down the screen. You would kind of chase behind and uh, down the screen. Yeah, you've got to screen that. Yeah. Chase behind. We ran up into this shot like a lot where you just pull behind as quick as we meet. Defense always went under that. Right. You get that look. Um, otherwise, you could so do that. If we could do a space in the corner. Josh, space in the corner. Right? You just drive it hard, roll, you just pull behind. That's all the same concepts as before. Roll out, roll into the box. Just rebuild to the start of the double. We didn't do this much, we didn't talk about it, maybe did it once or twice. We didn't also say that this can happen when we come down, yeah, and you can just back up. Might look at that, and then you would come back and you get the head on. Right? And you would just space, you're not pulling to the top, always just pulling to the seat. Right? You're blocks the way. Right. you get ahead of the ball, you're punching and popping it. Guards, players got the ball, everyone else is just sprinting deep into the corner. Looking for a kick ahead. Next guy. We'll stay in the corner, zoom, it's fine. Right, obviously on the weak side, we're going to give one fight. So we got it? Uh, let's, so we'll run the circle. And then we'll go up and back. Okay, ready? Fight, fight, fight! Pace him down, pace him down! Go, go, go! Pace, pace, pace! Again, we were small teams, so we knew teams would just switch a lot of screens and we would intentionally just have like our five setting screens so the five of the other team was defending <coughs> most of the time. Right? And I'll just so you can get it. So just come back to it. So we've had uh, someone in the corner. We've got drag screens, the ball's here. So we would call it skates if they hustled with that five. I mean, traditionally, fives aren't very mobile and they're probably not the best defender on the perimeter. So let's say. 
Um, you got a right? Yeah. Extreme. Let's say come off this and then hustle or we'll switch. Okay, what we're going to do is call it skates. And you might just pull up high here. Okay, you might pull up high. You're going to throw it to the guards and throw it across. Yeah. Let's imagine there's someone who's going to always get it right here. The catch. You're really just going to throw it. After you throw it, you're going to back pedal. Okay, so you're going to throw it and you're going to get some separation into the knee. And then you're going to throw it to the knee and then everyone's going to be spacing. Um, we would say that way then you can just get really deep underneath the hoop. Or if you wanted to, it would be perfectly fine if you just jump in the corner. Jump in the corner. They're on space. And now we're just going like full speed, back in the knee. It's called skates because they're on skates trying to stay in front. Right, we would get that a lot. Um, we had some, some pretty good players. Uh, Micah seems to as an example would be really good in that situation, just attacking downhill. We would always end up getting one of the freeze because the defense would just collapse like crazy. Yeah, just so you get a feel for what the reasoning behind why why the five is important. Okay, that's um. Just want to any questions briefly? There's a lot, and I probably skim through it very quickly. Nick, what were yep. the biggest difficulties you had, like playing at that pace? That week? Yeah, now that's the thing. We probably didn't play at that that pace you saw the whole week. Is we at the end of it, we only had eight players. Um, so it's hard to sustain that. If you had ten players, it would be awesome to be able to play at that pace. Um, that is definitely what it looks like at Cam One, that kind of speed. And the players get a better feel the more you do it for like what's a maintainable speed. Be able to play out. So it wasn't always quite that fast. But like I said, there were a few moments where we got really quick in mounds, we just kick it ahead and got on the rim. So again, that happened at least four times. I remember that happening at a Nationals game. So it was pretty like, that's pretty cool. I get to present on the fun stuff. I know the athletes are really excited after playing in pace and getting up and down. Now they get to do a defensive build up, which everyone loves to do. Um, something I actually learned last year here at this camp, and it's going to be our focus for this part of the 45 minutes of the clinic, is our habits. And when we're late in the tournament, when players get fatigued, we actually don't rise to our standards in our, um, we don't rise to occasions, we sink to our habits. So it's going to be a big focus for us today, and what I'm presenting on is really our individual defensive habits. Um, and I've got them written down there, hopefully everyone has a session plan that I've got, is one, being able to defend the ball one-on-one, -on -one, being disruptive with your hands and space, being able to show your hands, having the ability to defend, disrupt the ball with your hands, but then any time there's contact from the offensive player, being able to show your hands and put contact through your body, and then of course finishing defensive plays. So being able to hit and go get the ball and finish and come up with possession. So we're going to get straight into it. A lot of the drills are just daily training drills that I would have in every session at some point during our campaign. A lot of these athletes I've had with state teams already, so they would have done the drills with me before. So I'll try and get those athletes in front of you more often than not. Close out, any time we close out, ball, ball, carry a hand, and then we want to dig up into the basketball and sit down into a stance. Really important that we keep our feet square. We do not want to give the offense a lead foot in a direction here. Okay, so spear hand, you flex your hand up. Anytime they're in a stance ready to drive or arm's distance being disrupted with our hand, anytime they pivot or move that lead foot, if they go back, we're going to climb in, stay low, and then they wouldn't chop or they go to get off us, we've got to be quick to bounce back and get our hands up again. We're just going to stay in the stance, going to go for 20 seconds, defending that lead foot. Stay nice and low, keep your feet square on the closeout. Here we go. Stay down and it with your hand. Five, four, three, two, one. Switch over. Switch over, switch over, 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 over. Offense, I just want you to go jab fake. I want you to do a two count on each one. So jab fake. Might come back and shot fake. Pivot back. Wood shot forward. We're just going to try and work the defense over here. Defense, keep your hands up and stay active at all times. The skill is being able to close into the ball when he's on his back foot. And the second he ricks forward, we've got to be able to bounce off, get back, but get your hands up to your destructive. So they rip off, you can guard the drive, you can also 
Staying in front of that, but we aren't jumping around and flying around. The second they rip through, we've got to get off and back to arms distance, but then we're climbing in space. Okay, so Marley got caught bouncing from one side to another. They jab one way, you bounce one way, throw down that cross. So being able to stay low and just get in front of that lead foot. Here we go, one more time, each three. Another drill I do every week, this is called one-on-one -on -one marabits drill, it's not on the session plan, it's just something I wanted to put in. It's a good warm-up drill and it focuses on, focuses on both sides of the ball. So the offense, you ought to imagine this is a full circle Eli. Like. And your job is just to work on your handles, okay, go east, west, north, south, really work on attacking, retreating, you might break them down and work on those drill moves Nick um, put in. Defensively, it's all about being able to struck with our hands. Anytime the offense attacks, staying down, showing hands on contacts to come to my chest, get a chest blast, pop back, and then stay down again so I can disrupt. He attacks, I chest blast, I bounce off, and he retreats. We want to be able to stay down in close space. We do not want to allow separation for him to drag us back and then attack at 100%. It's about being able to stay in a stance, Staying disruptive with our hands, but then, like we talked about before, the skill is being able to any time here tap, show hands, make contact through our body and get chest blocks. You two get them right here. Show hands into the ball. Disruptive with your hands, show them on contact. Disruptive with your hands, good contact. Find your own space in the half court here. Remember, disrupt with that hand any time they advance it. Shot. Get a chest blast and stay down in the stance. Close space on the retreat. 30 seconds on. Here we go. I do this drill every week, you guys, I the North athletes. This is one of my favorite drills. I think it's really important one if you're gonna um, work on the offense. Being able to handle the basketball under pressure. Brandon, 20 seconds off. But two defensively, in the half court, I feel like this is all you probably need to be able to defend. There's two slides either way on the dribble. Everything else, there should be a help defender there. You should be able to level them off and keep them going across. And in the full court, if they are going anything faster or more than two dribbles, now you're probably staying long, sprinting and getting in front. You're probably not sliding anymore at the back corner. It's turning into a sprint. Switch over, offense, defense. Disrupt with your hands. They try and advance and show them get chest blocks. Here we go. Defense, you do your job, 
Shot goes, you do not watch the ball, you hit, sit and don't get, you can score. It's the first player to score a basket. Defense, we're working on sitting in a stance, defending that lead foot, walling up, getting your body in front, making them play over us and through us. Here we go, check it up, Joe. Get outside the charge circle and flip it up. Come back, start here, and just flip it up there. Climb into it. So you're outside the charge circle. Show, show, show your hands, wall. Go again, wall, hands up. Make it play over you and through you, both hands. Okay, so one would play, and then the other would go. Really important when you're forcing high contested shots in. Okay? Uh, you guys want to go the other end and play. Oh. You want to stay down, wall up, and then you play through our chest and over our body. Um, something I teach, probably more so for our junior athletes, 12, 14, even 16 to a degree, is that we're charge takers, not shot blockers. We want one on one, everything to go through us and over us. And then the health defense can come across and block shots. Hold up, move it out. We're going to go out to the block now. The same thing, defense starts at the ball, heels on the charge circle, offense is on the block. They have one dribble. You can catch and shoot. So let's flip it up, close out. Now after you close out, being disruptive with your hands in space. Close out, dig up, make them move the ball, defend that lead foot. If they go to attack, we're getting it cross, getting a chest blast. They pick it up, we wall up in close space. Being disruptive with your hands here and your space. Quick demo. Hands right. Wall, wall, get both hands up. Really important to have a close space, get both hands up, get your arm off it. Referee's going to ping you. Here we go, both ends. Good points on the speed. 
spin here. Anytime that the player attacks you and spins, really important that once we cut it off, we're able to stay down, get the chest blast, and then we're quick to get off so we can slide again. Players get burnt on spins and secondary moves. When we chest blast, we do our first initial drop, and then we stand up. When standing up is giving up, you gotta be able to stay down, get back off, and get ready to defend a secondary move. This is because I say, in a stand, stay in the back. Out to the foul line, the next person in line gets it out of the net and throws it out. 
working on getting a hand up on the shot. Really high percentage foul shot here. So you've got to be able to get a hand at the shot and then being able to defend that first initial attack. Finish plays in the block. Yeah. Can shoot.
what do you guys see on that? What is a lot of the pro not problems, what are a lot of the areas of improvement for the athletes individually? Back to the basket, don't open up too much. Back to the basket, not opening up. That's a big thing. Not opening up our stance so much that we give a lead foot and a straight line drive. We want to stay between them and the hoop and try and keep our feet square as much as possible. You know, it can go across the floor, east, west, around us, and we want to avoid north, south drives, anything downhill. Can I get seen here, offensive defense? Make sure uh, boys match up, boys, girls match up, girls. Just going to build up our half court shell offense, our shell defense now. So, same as the one on one middle corridor drill, the scenes are the out of bounds. We're playing in the middle third here. Offense, you cannot pass the line of the basketball. So, you can only advance it on the dribble. So you're going to start, let's have a check, hand it over, being disrupted with the ball. Well, that one should be wide on the scene, right on the main line here. Seam to seam, we're going to be on the nail. You're going to be in the gap. In a stance, nice and wide, being active. We want to be active in the gap here. Anytime the ball comes towards us, we're going to hunt and throw. Okay, we're not going to sit and seam. We're going to hunt, deter the ball, and try and slow it. And then throw and get back to our play. But Josh's job is to send the ball across the floor. Marley's job is to provide pack support and slow the ball down. We just want Eli to catch it. When he drives, to see some help there. To try and slow him down, he might bring the ball back a bit and to give Josh a little bit more of an advantage to get in front. Okay, but any time the ball is coming across the floor, we want to be hunting and throwing. Getting back to our play. So there's going to be two passes, then live. You can only advance on the dribble, no screens, no handles. Here we go. Oh, oh, oh. Oh. Yeah, so Joe, we're off in feet, girls make sure you're at the top, halfway where you come straight in. Make sure when you close back out, Josh, we don't open up our footwork. You close it out here, your first step is open, it's got to be across, send them across the floor. See if you're out of bounds here, middle third. Oh. Don't let them through that gap, don't let them through that gap, and I'm right. Close the full bum and 
head snap and force back to the hoop. As Zoe replaces here, we call it recovering to the help. Basically, will sprint. She won't slide across and stand long with the player. Zoe's back on the scene. She will sprint and take up that gap and do that job. She will come over now, sprint, arrive in the gap, recover to the help, and then once Zoe gets the ball back, we close out and we play from there. Anytime you're defending the wing, we're going to be in denial. Here we go, go shower once I call live, we're playing three on three. Stop, start again, get your stance, communicate off the ball here, down and make sure you're in denial on the wing. Getting in a stance, 
and arriving on the catch in a stance. Always nine the wing. We got it. Stay down in the stance. You want to strike to recover hard. We got it. Check it. Pass across, exchange, pass down, pass up. We got it. the other thing, we're in shell, ball's moving, what do we talk about Marley doing once the ball gets reversed? Sprint. Sprinting and Sprint to help. Yep, recovering to the help. And once we started getting the shell, we started to get lazy and we dropped our habits. We weren't recovering to the help. The only time you're in line with your player is if you're guarding basket. Every other time you're going to be guarding your player and half someone else's. The ball goes from Zoe to, uh, actually let's go Eli, just so the coaches can see, to Riley. Uh, let's say you two are exchanging on that. So you're cutting, you're, faced, uh, you're cutting, down is forcing away. Sean is sprinting and recovering to the help right here. Okay, her job is to be in front of Taylor. If Taylor replaces and comes to her, that's fine. But someone needs to be in this gap right here, providing pack support and helping Marley on dribble penetration. So it's really important that when we recover, we recover to the help. We aren't, come back Taylor, running in line with Taylor. And running across, running across, and just putting Marley on an island, and letting Riley go one-on-one. -on -one. We've got to recover to the help. We've got to do a better job of that this time. So we've got inner stance. Disrupt you with your hand in space here, one-on-one. -on -one. Nine Marley, nine Louise. Okay. Oh. Oh, stop with that. Four move, Marley. You got me. Here we go. Sorry. Did anyone notice it? 
I thought they did an outstanding job of hunting and throwing, being able to provide pack support, deterring the ball from getting into the lane, giving their teammate an extra step to get in front, then they close space. Made it really difficult on the catch, they arrived on the catch and Riley threw his hands. Play going under 80 nationals, knowing taking away the three point shots, really important. Did a great job, got to stay in the stands when you close out. Did a great job. Uh, now we're just going to play animal drill now, so we can go back to that, go seams and wings. The under 80 girls love this drill. The ball's going to start the coach out here. So it's the first animal drill, it's the first team to get five stops in a row. Okay, it's very competitive. You've got to end with the block out. It's just four on four tag, ball comes in, you've got to get the ball to a wing. Okay, on tag, throw it. Just get both of you out of tag the sideline. Further as the defender will get the captain. And they will stop the ball. Your job is to stop it before it gets inside the keyway. Try and slow it. Down slides and guards too. Okay, we do not want to help off this pass here. Okay, short pass. You don't have vision of her. Tay's a really good three-point shooter. She's going to try and knock that down. It's terrible dragging you behind. Makes your sprint off. Four on four tag. Contain penetration. Hands up on the close out. Bring your feet square. We go. Some of the habits, probably 
better word for it. That we need to improve on as a group to say. Give it up straight line they're off. Yep, how do we improve that? Closing out technique. Closing out technique. Closing out technique. Like we talked about, I uh, went back, just going, I'm going back to the one-on-one -on -one Boston ball. I find that a really good drill, like it's a good offensive drill, but it's a really good drill for working on their closeout technique. Okay, getting a hand up, being able to take away the shot, but also being able to get your feet square, because you're that close to the basket, where if you give up one dribble too far one way, it's a layup. It's being able to get your feet square and close out. What else? Closeout technique is big. Staying down on chest bar, staying in the, um, staying in the fight. Late clock ball pressure. The hands went down as soon as it got probably about 20, 20 seconds. Late clock ball pressure, that's a good point. So what shots are we looking for in the late clock? What shots are we looking for? Daniel? Um, penetration, layups, penetration. or kickouts? Yeah. Layups, kickouts. So ball pressure is really important, isn't it? Being able to disrupt once again with our hands and our space, and being able to take away shots and take away penetration. And the other thing was, I thought, was finishing plays. And the three things we spoke about at the beginning. You know, ball pressure on the ball, hands disrupted with our space and our hands, staying down on chest blast, sending them across, and then finishing plays and blocking out. So drills, that um, things are just got to be drilled constantly. So at the end of sessions, when we get fatigued, at the end of tournaments, end of state championships, end of the season, that's what your players are doing. It's just second nature. That's what they're sinking to at the end of the game. Because that, that's what happens. That's what's going to win you the game. And I know um, I was talking to the NBL 1 Tornadoes head coach this week when we were talking about the WNBL championship winner. What was the captain's name? I forgot her name. What was it, Sarah? Griffin. Who was the captain that spoke yeah. at the end of the press Griffin. conference? Kelsey Griffin. She yeah. praised their defence at the end of it. No, it was Marianne Tolo. Tolo, did as Tolo well. praised the defence. And if you watch the Capitals, they were outstanding defensively and being able to force the ball across, across the floor and then keep it in front, especially against really good penetrators like Beck Cole. Obviously, goes in and out of that level, but they did a really good job throughout the game in the fix, fix holes as the game went on. Any more questions on that? No? Are you? Actually, really quickly, we thank the athletes. Yeah. Thank you.